Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. I'd like to welcome everyone to another episode of my podcast on finding peace. And this is the podcast where we talk about practical ways of finding our peace in everyday life and how we can incorporate mindfulness and what we do every day uh, already. And how do we make that more peaceful and more meaningful uh, in our lives? And today I'm very honored to uh, have our guest, uh, Michelle Paradise, who's going to uh, talk a bit about what she does, but also um, more to the point of uh, a practice called Havening and what that is and how that is going to uh, help us out in our lives. Um, if you're watching us on Facebook, feel free to leave some comments or questions. Uh, we're also over at Huzzah. And uh, if you're there, there's a section for chats. So uh, you can type in any questions or comments you might have, and we'll do our best at answering that. So uh, welcome, Michelle. It's great to have you. Thank you. And I'm honored to be here as well, Chris. Great. Well, it's uh, wonderful to finally connect with you. Mm -hmm. um, can you uh, give a bit to the audience about who you are, what you do? and? Uh... OK. Um, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> That's all on you. <laughs> Um, we normally go 45 to 50 okay. minutes, so. Okay, yes, uh, I'll, I'll give you the very edited version. Um, <clears throat> probably best to start where, how I got involved in all of this um, and uh, give you a little bit of background of me at the same time. I was, uh, I, I was born on the East Coast, uh, not far from where you are in Maryland, and um, Wonderful. had a great childhood and then decided that I was, because I was tall and all of that, I wanted to be a model. Um, and wasn't terribly confident, but anyway, long story short, I started to get some work on the East Coast, and then I was told that probably do better in Europe, so I left for Europe when I was quite young, in my teens, late teens, and um, I did quite well there. Um, I was a runway model for about, well, 20 years, and uh, however, whilst being a model, I developed anorexia, which probably comes as no surprise, because it's uh, one of those sort of hand-in-hand Mm -hmm. things that models develop and uh, I, I firmly believe through my work that this is one woman's opinion that anorexia or any eating disorder is a level of control over one's life that is probably in many other ways if not always spun out of control so uh, for me that was certainly what it was and it was the one last thing that I could control However, I didn't realize how deeply I was getting into it until one day um, somebody said to me, you know, if you're not careful, you won't be able to have any children because uh, you, you've reverted back to prepubescence. And uh, if you stay there too long, then the body just gets very confused and I'm simplifying it here and I might not be able to conceive. At that time, it wasn't that important to me. However, I was and still am one of those people that if somebody says you can't have something, it it certainly lights me up, you know, and I'm like, no, I don't, no, 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 I don't like that answer. I, I want it even more. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Um, so I went on this quest to help myself because at the time this was uh, quite early 80s. There wasn't a lot of information around. I was based in the UK, so homeopathy was quite big. I started studying homeopathy, which really helped actually, but I was still doing it all myself. And then uh, along the way I met I met at a, a fashion show uh, backstage a woman who said to me, I know somebody that can help you. So I went off to see him, and he did. And he was um, an NLP trainer, neuro linguistic programming. And it was, as you know, and I'm sure some of your viewers know, it's the, the study of the mind, the study of human behavior and strategies to. Um, become better versions of ourselves. That's probably the simplest way to put it. I was fascinated by it. I said, where can I sign up? This is something I think I've been looking for all my life because I've always been interested in that. Mm -hmm. And there was a course the following uh, two weeks from that date. 
I went on that and I was trained by Dr. Richard Bandler, who's the co-creator of NLP. I then went on to become a master practitioner and trainer myself and one of his assistants, which I did for the past 10 years. And along the way, I cleared up a lot of stuff in my life. Uh, during that time, I was, hypnosis is very much a part of NLP. So I became a, a clinical and professional hypnotherapist because that, that added um, even more skills to my skill set. And then about two mm -hmm. years ago, um, bringing us up to the, this moment in time, about two years ago, well, 2014, I uh, heard about I heard about it in 2013, but I wasn't able to go on the course, something called havening techniques. And I was quite fascinated by it, but I didn't have the time. And then I found out that they were the doctors, their twin brothers, Dr. Steve and Ron Rudin, were actually going to do a training in New York. So I literally, you know, within days, I jumped on a plane to New York because I, I always like to go to the source. I think if, you know, Freud is alive and you're into mm -hmm. Freudian therapy, then you go and learn from him. So I went exactly. and had the most wonderful experience, met some fantastic people, some I knew, some I didn't, and um, decided that this was, realized that this was the missing piece to what I had been doing with my clients. Because NLP is great. I call it my archaeological dig because within NLP there are things called meta questions, meta model. And for those who don't understand what it is, um, it's it's asking people questions in a very different way from different perspectives. And we tend to, not always, but we tend to stay away from the word why because we get a lot of because and that sort of reaches a dead end. So it's much more about the how. How come you did it that way? How could you do it differently? So that gives me a lot of front end information. And then havening, which I will describe in a moment, is my, it's called my havening sandwich. Havening's in the middle. That's where the real healing goes on. And then I usually finish off with um, some form of hypnosis, which I also call future pacing, because the word hypnosis scares some people. However, we are in and out of hypnotic yeah. states all day long, and we're not in control of them. So work I do is actually helping people use these hypnotic states for more control in their life and better outcomes. So what is havening techniques? It has several names. Um, the, the medical name or the sort of very formal name is amygdala depotentiation therapy. Don't say that one too quickly too many times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd have to I, write I that down a second. I did, and I, a little, a little <laughs> A little secret which won't be much of a secret but i struggled to remember how to spell amygdala for a while so i turned it into a young woman's name or a woman's name called amy g dollar that's so that was that was i remembered it anyway i'm this that was a few years ago so i'm well versed in it now the amygdala is an almond shaped part of the brain that's in the center of the brain and very simply without going into too much science it's where we store trauma and now trauma can be something like a, a life-threatening situation or it could be having to stand in front of a classroom at the age of five or seven and read from a book and stumble and stutter and be traumatized by that event for a very long time and i'll actually tell a story around that later to illustrate what i mean so we we store this bad situation bad event um bad memories whatever in the amygdala and then um we carry on in our life and certain things light up the amygdala sort of create this red light now the reason why this is kind of quite important is this is what we do when we're when we're faced as you know and i'm sure your your viewers know when we're faced with traumatic events we have choices it's fight flight freeze feed uh those are there, there are actually some other ones faint and uh, the, the f's of trauma and um, we start, we get into this loop. So if the traumatic event isn't healed, isn't delinked and decoded from the amygdala, then we, we kind of get on this hamster wheel, which is a very uncomfortable one. And certain things can light it up. So let's say you had an experience with a dog mm -hmm. and the dog came at you and perhaps bit you. And uh, after a while, you might, you might not be around a lot of dogs after that event for whatever reason, but you, you start generalizing that event after a while. And it gets to the point where you might even just hear the word dog and your amygdala lights up and you become frightened. So my goal is, and Havening's goal, is to 
relieve you from that stress and anxiety, those traumatic events, so that you can get on with your life. Because some of these things become full-blown phobias. And as we know, phobias are debilitating for some people. You know, some people can, literally cannot leave their home depending on the type of um, phobia that they have. So what happens in hating is uh, the, the other terminology for it is delta wave technique. And it's a psychosensory therapy. It's a mind-body connection. So just to back up for a moment, um, a lot of the therapies that we're familiar with uh, there are two pillars that have existed already, which are the, t the psychotherapies, talking therapies. The second one would be the psychopharmacology, which is the, the drugs that we take, the medication that we take for anxiety and things like this. And this we see as the third pillar, which is psychosensory. So the first pillar, let's say, deals with the mind. The second pillar deals with the body, the drugs. And the third pillar is this sort of mind-body connection. Because what we now know through studying the brain, and it's so exciting at the moment because we know so much more about the brain and neuroplasticity and all of those things. We now know that we are mind-body connected always. There, there is no disconnection. Yep. And this is proved in the fact that as human beings, we are electrochemical beings. So any electrical stimuli, whether it's something that somebody says to us or touches us or a thought in our head releases some sort of neurotransmitter, some sort of, uh, you know, if it's a bad thing or if it's a frightening thing, we might release some adrenaline and get really anxious <laughs> and tight. If somebody gives us a wonderful compliment, it might reduce a uh, release a bit of serotonin or dopamine and we feel really good. So we get bathed in these chemicals all throughout the day. However, when we've got a traumatic event stored in the amygdala, we can just hear the word dog or see a picture of a dog and we get lit up. And all of those not very good chemicals like cortisol and um, adrenaline kick in and we go into a panic state or a very high state of alert. And this is probably best illustrated when you think about war veterans. And in fact, a lot of the work, the initial work that was done in Havening was around working with war veterans because they have extremely high levels of all of these things, PTSD, hypervigilance, they even have traumatic brain injuries. So um, Havening techniques was used with great, great results. And, and we still do. We have a whole arm of Havening, um, which is called Veterans Havening. And we work a lot of a lot of practitioners do pro bono work with uh, war veterans, and we get fantastic results. So I'm very proud of that. Um, that that you know that's one of our causes. Uh, is it making sense, Chip? <laughs> it's, are you getting? It, it's making sense to me, um, because you know, as you're saying, we're we've been learning so much more about the brain and about how the brain does influence not only our uh, mental state, but our physical state. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I know the, the years that I've been in counseling, um, w you know, when you first started out, we didn't talk much about the brain. We didn't know much about the brain, you know, and, and it's a whole different field right now when you include all of these areas and, and how they operate. And, you know, the more that we understand that, I, I think the better, uh, you know, we're able to treat people. Yeah. So, I think when, you know, you're saying that, the, you know, here's a mind body connection, you know, and, and here's where we can store this. And if we can um, change those connections, mm -hmm. we're going to change everything else. Absolutely. Beautifully said. And it? Okay. I'm Good. glad you got it. <laughs> so I think I've got it. it. There's more to tell you and, and even more to show you. So by the time we finish, it will be crystal clear that I can promise you. But the, the thing is that the beauty of, the brain, knowing what we know, is so much of what we learn, what we think we are born with is not true. We weren't born with it. There are very few things that we were born with in terms of fears, like mm -hmm. one of them is the fear of falling. You sometimes experience that in a dream where you sort of jump because uh, you feel like you're falling, or the fear of loud noises. And there are a few of them, but a lot of, of the things that really torture us in our lives have been learned. And that's what's so amazing about the brain is that we can unlearn them. And I'm a bit of a geek around these things. And I got very excited in September of 2016 when the Oxford English Dictionary finally acknowledged that neuroplasticity was a term, that, they could, that uh, a concept. And you and I... It took pardon? that long? 
it took that long, long to just that come long. up with we yes, agree to exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah, Amazing. it is. And you and I, and I'm sure many people watching this, have known about the word and have used the word, but it's now been recognized mm -hmm. as a real concept, that, that, that there is such a thing as neuroplasticity. And in my work, this is what I really focus on, is that we can change, and change is good. And um, let's have a better version of ourselves, let's have a better life, let's live in more peace and harmony, and less stress and less anxiety. So what happens in Havening, it is a touching therapy, which some people go, ooh, I don't know about that. However, I've not met a client yet that when it's explained to them, doesn't want to be touched because it's the most soothing, wonderful sensation. Because what it does is, and I'll demonstrate it in a moment, but before I do that, I'll just explain how it works. It releases delta waves, which are mm -hmm. sort of our deep sleep waves and the healing, it's when we're in deep healing state. It's also, it's also a touch that is hardwired at birth. And just a little, a quick little story. I was um, doing an intro evening recently and there was a really lovely woman in the audience, wasn't too sure about what I was doing, but liked the idea. Anyway, she was convinced that, mm -hmm. that it really had validity and it really did work. And then she shared this with me, which has been a bit of gold dust for me. She was an RN for years and she worked with micro preemies. And the three things that, that they did in utero because they were born so early and they were pretty much still in utero when they came out in the incubator was they clasped their face in their hands, they hugged themselves hmm. and they clasped their hands together. And these are the three areas that we focus on when doing the havening touch. And what the doctors that created this discovered through their research is um, these are the three areas of the body that relief release the highest levels of delta waves. So for example, if any of your listeners know about EMDR, um, it releases eight to 9% of delta waves. However, when you're doing havening mm -hmm. and the face havening, it looks like this. It's very gentle havening, a very gentle touch. This releases about 80 to 90% of delta waves. So you can see already mm -hmm. the difference. Uh, shoulders to elbows coming back in a circular motion. That's about 60, mm -hmm. 50 to 60 percent delta waves, and then the hands are about 30 to 40 percent. So you already have a much mm -hmm. higher level of delta wave release. Now, why is this important? Because it puts you in a very safe place, because havening is actually the transitive verb of haven, which means safe place. And that's how the name uh, came up. Now you get it. I was going to be asking that, you know, where this yeah, is. So. Exactly. So what we're doing is we are putting you in a very safe place to begin with, because I will start havening immediately with your permission, obviously. Now, just a just a little sidebar here. If the if the client isn't comfortable with being havened, uh, facilitated, mm -hmm. then they can self haven. And what I do, I do a lot of work on Skype mm -hmm. where I will actually they will mirror haven me. So I will sit. And haven myself when I've worked with a client for a while and they're very comfortable with this I just get them to close their eyes and they self haven they don't need to see me and then we, we really do our work okay. so mm -hmm. when I start havening them I'm already getting them their body to release because remember it's electrochemical so this lovely feeling they're releasing the Delta waves they get I've had all mm -hmm. kinds of descriptions I feel high I feel weird I feel great I feel more relaxed than I've ever felt, whatever. And then we go, for example, to an event. There's something called event havening. And that would be, and I'll, I'll illustrate this with a little story if that's okay, because it just makes it a lot easier. I have a 35 year old man, yeah. we'll call Johnny, come to see me. And he was uh, up for a promotion for a great job, wanted it. However, he needed to do some public speaking. And he had, which 70% of people in this country have, a phobia of public speaking. It's very high. And uh, he couldn't really pinpoint it, so I started my archaeological dig with him. And we discovered that at the age of seven, he had forgotten it, but he remembered that at the age of seven, he is, his teacher sort of volunteered him to get up in front of the class and read. And he didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And he stumbled and faltered, and his classmates laughed at him, and he ran out of the room pretty humiliated and never, ever wanted to do that again. Now... That was it. There was the event, and it can happen in an absolute split second. 
And then it gets compounded from years of, you know, perhaps other experiences around that. Um, and what happens is sometimes people then get to where Johnny is and he was in a full blown phobia. He had a full blown phobia. Okay. So now right. I guess in the old days it would have been treated with, you would have treated the symptoms. Okay. Let's deal with Johnny's, mm -hmm. how come he can't, you know, let's coach him into how to be a better presenter. And I would do the same thing. Right. Had, having not known what I know now. However, what I now know is that when a client comes to me, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are presenting with the symptoms and not the cause. So it's my job to find the cause, the core of the issue. The, okay. in, this, in this situation, the defining event. So mm -hmm. there are four parts to the perfect storm of trauma. And we have a little acronym, EMLI, E-M-L-I. They work like this. E represents the event. So in this case, E was the event at school for Johnny. M is meaning. And the meaning to Johnny was, I'm stupid. I'm really, I'm really not very clever, you know? And whether that be true or not, that is how he interpreted that situation. L stands for landscape. Now this is sort of twofold. This is the landscape of your brain at the time. And the other way I look at it is sort of the landscape of your life. So in his case, um, and it's something that came out in the conversation is his parents, his father lost his job, their socioeconomic situation had changed, it impacted on him. There was a lot of discontent at home, a lot of arguing and things. So mm -hmm. his happy childhood wasn't that happy anymore. And the landscape of his life had changed. And it usually goes into the negative in a situation like this. And then the, the last one, and they're all important, but this one is you know quite important, is inescapability. He couldn't get out. You know, he just fell out. Right. And this is what happens in so many traumatic situations. So you have an event, the event has meaning to you. There, the landscape of your brain is probably quite challenged at that period of time for whatever reason. It could be a health issue. It could be a financial issue. It could be a relationship issue. All, all these things. Mm -hmm. And you just can't, you feel that you can't get out. So what did we do? I um, started havening him and with permission, of course. Mm -hmm. And I got him to for a very short period of time, activate the event, activate the memory. And we use a subjective unit of distress, which is also lovingly called SUDS. And um, if you have no emotional response to the event, you're at a zero. If you have a very high one, you're, you're at a 10 or thereabouts. So I, I like to I like to hover mm -hmm. between a 10 and I'm sorry, an eight and a 10 when I'm working with somebody to, I like to really get it activated so we can knock it out once and for all. And then I start the havening and there's things within it. You do some distraction techniques, not too dissimilar to EMDR, but uh, we do some lateral mm -hmm. eye movement and there's some humming. Cause we, we also now know that humming and sound and singing really help to change the neurochemistry of the brain. And I'm really simplifying this and going through it very quickly, but I think this is the stuff we really want to know. And uh, so, mm -hmm. and then I start getting him to count. And that's the, the, the really big distraction piece. So I will have found out beforehand what his hobbies are, what his interests are. And uh, let's say he likes tennis. So I'll get him to start at 30 and count down to zero, counting every tennis ball that he lobs to the other side. Right. And um, so he's focusing on that. I'm havening him, getting him into a really good delta wave state. We're, we're moving him fairly quickly away from the event. And I will do that for as many rounds as it takes, um, interjecting the eye movement and the humming and then starting the second round, checking in with him to see where we are. Maybe it was a 10. Now it's an eight. Finding out if there's any other things that have lit up because sometimes there are there may be other events around that that um, happened around public speaking or whatever so we can deal with all of those at the same time and without fail really i'm you know it's happened it works every time we'll get to the end of it and johnny is like i love i like a bit of a perfectionist i like a zero but i'll take one you know? <laughs> so they around that and yeah. then um and this is pretty much the same answer every time I ask this question. So when you think about that event now, what's different about it? And I get all these sort of eye accessing cues of looking up and desperately trying to make the picture. And the picture is mm -hmm. 
usually very far away or out of focus or pixelated. And my favorite metaphor that I've been, um, that I've heard from a client is, I feel like I was in the film and now I'm sitting in the audience watching the film. And I'm no longer firing off the emotions of that event. I'm actually watching the event. And it's as if I'm watching somebody else do it and they happen to look like me, but it doesn't mean very much. And that's what we're going for. And that can be done in one session. Mm -hmm. Literally one question. Now, the way we, we roll out Havening, it's healing, empowerment, and growth. So the thing is, when you create a void in somebody's landscape, um, imagine you've got a, mm -hmm. your landscape is like a garden and there's a big dying tree or weed and you dig it out. There's a hole. So we don't want the client to fall back right. into the hole, literally. So it's uh, the, the empowerment and the growth aspect is... Um, other types of havening that we do, such as affirmational havening, where I will haven the personal, they will haven themselves saying, I am, I am strong, I am calm, I am confident, and they will do things like that. So as we know, affirmations are extremely powerful, and we're doing it in yep. the present state, I am, it's not something you have to wait for. And you're in this beautiful delta wave state, you just come out of the healing aspect of this traumatic event and it's just win, win, win for everybody. Yeah. And uh, there's also lots of other pieces in it. We have something called transpirational havening when uh, that's best to be done with a licensed uh, certified um, havening facilitator like myself or someone else, because sometimes that can light up some, some deep things. And that will be when the client is bringing up the negative emotions around the event. So let's say Johnny and I finished, he was at a one. I want to double check to make sure everything's okay. So I'll say, are there any residual emotions around there, the negative emotions? And he might say humiliation. So we will humiliation. And he will just say that mm -hmm. repeatedly. And it's sort of like an oak tree. Those emotions are at the roots. We bring it up to transpire it, get it out onto the branches, and then it evaporates through the leaves. And by the time you finished, again, there is the humiliation or shame or whatever the emotion was mm -hmm. is gone. It's pretty, it's gone to the point where it doesn't bother them anymore. And then we continue to, haven to do the affirmations and we can even do something called outcome havening, which we change the outcome of the situation. So Johnny goes in whilst I haven him. And I say, Johnny, if it had ended differently, what would it look like? What would a different ending look like? What would a better ending look like for you? And he goes in, and he, because as we know, I'm sure you know this, and a lot of your viewers do, that the brain does not dif differentiate between real and vividly imagined. So when you're sitting there doing the visualization with them and they are bringing up this different positive outcome, it works. Because again, you're in this wonderful delta wave state. I will take a breath now. <laughs> and <laughs> your show. This is all fascinating work. Um, I, I guess one of the things that, as you were talking, came to my mind, how would you work with someone who is having difficulty getting in touch with the emotional part? Great question. So they're so traumatized where they're, they can get back into the story, they can relate that story, but that relating is very uh, detached. Uh, from the emotions and you know they they may express a couple emotions, yep. but you you know those are just surface mm -hmm. um, Can this still work is is there something else? You know that you would do with that or, or do we have to be totally in touch with those emotions? Well um, Before I answer that I just want to say something that's quite important at this point Havening can be can be done content free. Okay, so if a client comes to me and the mm. and the memory or the trauma or whatever is way too painful for them to talk about or, or relive, I can do, I can go straight into transpirational havening, which would just be the emotions that they're feeling at that time. And I would think that okay. if they're coming to see me, there's something lit up, you know, um, whether it's the event or whether there even was an event. Sometimes there's not necessarily event. It could be, um, you know, sometimes when we get, when we get older in our lives, we've forgotten all of those things and all we're left with mm -hmm. are the negative emotions that are 
blocking right. us. Uh, you know, somebody will come to me and say, I'm really depressed. I don't know why I'm depressed. You know, a classic one. I'm really stuck. I don't know mm -hmm. why I'm stuck. So I would, at that point, go with the emotion they're, they're having, that they're experiencing, and I would do some transpirational havening around that. So let's say they felt depressed, um, which isn't the most useful one, but I would... I, I, not a great metaphor, but it's it, it works in a situation like this. I love metaphors. I'm sure you've noticed that. Um, I see people as sort of beautiful onions, and we start to peel back the layer, right? And some of the outside layers may be a bit hard, and they might seem a bit impenetrable, impenetrable at the time. But once you start peeling them back, and I know I keep saying this, but the delta wave state is doing so much else with the brain to loosen these things up and to, to let the client feel that yes i am in a safe place and i people tell me things they tell me all kinds of things that they've never told anybody else that's why i know how this works so i would work with the the presenting emotion and then i would feel fairly confident through my experience with this that um we will get to where we need to go through peeling back the onions they, they start to relax and they start to remember and they have a lot of things flashing through it's it's tiring work for them it's not so tiring for me because I have the benefit of receiving the mirror neurons from them, which are the good feelings that they have. But think about it, some of these mm -hmm. people are, you know, let's say they're in their thirties and they're having, they're reliving 30 some years of their lives like that, yeah. you know, within one session, I do a breakthrough session, which is 90 minutes and follow-up sessions are 60 minutes. So you, you can do an awful lot in 90 minutes. And I always recommend that my client, oh, yeah make space at the end um, to go and have a rest because they frequently say to me, I'm exhausted. I don't know why I'm so exhausted. So yeah, you can, I, I hope I've answered your question, but you can go in from many mm -hmm. different doors to get right. what the client needs. It is not just a one way door, a one way street. Right. Um, and it's a yeah. very creative and flexible technology or sorry, a methodology. And um, I, I think you're aware of this. I now work with uh, Deepak Chopra. I'm a wellness expert on his mm -hmm. uh, digital wellness platform and uh, called Jio. And when I met him, he had never met, um, he had heard about havening, but he never met a havening uh, practitioner. And this might also help to explain a little bit. And so I'm doing all my, you know, psychosensory therapy explanation. And I see his eyes glazing over. And then I said, um, and I remembered he's a doctor, you know. Uh, he was chief of staff at a Boston hospital when he was, I think, in his 30s. And I said, oh, it's amygdala depotentiation therapy. And he went, oh, I get that. I, I completely got it. And that's when he sort of signed me up and we do what we do. But what I do with him is I work on a digital platform. Um, and I work with people all over the world. And sometimes English isn't their first language. So even that can sometimes restrict us, but it yeah. still works or, and it still works because getting mm -hmm. people to, to get back in touch with the thing that started them on this unpleasant journey or this journey of uh, I, one woman's opinion. I don't people, I don't believe people are broken. I believe people get stuck and they get stuck bad hamster mm -hmm. wheels if you like, and I am there to unstick right. them. And that's what my work does in a nutshell. It's like, I don't believe mm -hmm. you're diseased yeah. or broken or, you know, can't be fixed. And that's the beauty of what we know about neuroplasticity is that anything is possible. Absolutely anything is possible. Right. Right. And, and I, I really appreciate what you're saying because I, I like the onion example in the sense that if, if people who are listening, you know, might, you know, say, well, yeah, I've, I've got these feelings, but I, I don't know the story, you know, so I'm blocked from that story or, yeah, with those emotions, you know, I, I just tell that story. It really isn't just somebody coming up to a stranger or going to an office and you saying, give me your no. story. So the fact that you're doing all this other prep mm -hmm. work yeah, is leading somebody to discovering something that they don't yet know, yeah. you know, and and I, I do see that as a boost. You know, I mean, for me, not trained in havening and, and learning myself from you on on this, 
a lot of what I would do in, in the CBT work and uh, my coaching work is yeah. verbal. And, you know, minus any of these, you're going to hit some roadblocks uh, uh, that we just can't verbalize that, at that point. And you just said in a very beautiful way what I how I started this conversation is it's my havening sandwich because I love my other skills but I would I would frequently mm -hmm. hit a block and think mm -hmm. if I could only get my hands on that and now I can I can literally get my hands on it right. yeah so I do I mm -hmm. do a lot of coaching work I do a lot of hypnosis hypnotherapy changing behaviors things like that however if we hit a roadblock that is a traumatic event, something that is stuck in the amygdala and their prefrontal cortex is shut down and they're not making good judgments and good decisions and all of those other things, then I have something that can very elegantly and efficiently um, heal and change that aspect of their brain. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And it just gives me, um, I just feel sort of empowered um, when I meet a client now that that anything is possible, that I can get them the result that they want. I guarantee every client, I tell them right up front, and I stand by this, you will always feel better, 100% feel better. No, sorry, not you won 100%, but 100% I can promise you, you will feel better when you leave a session with me than when you came in. And I've not found anybody yet that, that hasn't done that. Because I don't leave my clients hanging either. I might book for 90 minutes, but I will go 110 minutes if I have to. And they don't pay any extra because I don't leave my clients opened up. And I, I don't right. subscribe to that school of therapy, which I have heard about where, you know, they've had this terrible session and then, okay, your time is up. And now you have to go and drive the car home. And I know you're in floods of tears, but that's, yep. that's just the way it is. We don't do that. Um, I, I think I can speak for my colleagues yeah. as well. I don't know how they deal with the time, but personally I do that. So what does my business look like? I send an intake questionnaire, which also will answer some of the things you've just brought up or, or flesh them out a bit more. And I, I like gathering as much information before I meet a client so that I don't, my, my term and my belief, I don't waste their time. I don't want to sit in session and ask, so how, right. how many brothers and sisters do you have? You know, I want all of that stuff up front. I will also ask them because I'm NLP trained. I'm looking at their language. I'm looking at their, you know, are they visual auditory kinesthetic? Um, how do they present, you know, what are, what are their beliefs? What are their limited beliefs around this? So I'm getting an awful lot of information before they even walk in the door. Um, I will then give a 20 minute mm -hmm. free telephone consultation. That's usually the other way around. I do that first and then when they're interested, if they're interested, I send them an intake questionnaire. And then we go straight in pretty much. I do a bit of talking up front, um, seeing how they are. Some people, I had, a, I had a recent client who heard me on a podcast came in was pretty terrified about the whole thing not that there's anything to be frightened of but it was actually her husband who brought her in no and you know she had seen other therapists and she had been left opened up so she didn't want to go there again mm -hmm. so i had to spend you know i chose to spend the first half hour building rapport because as we know the real mm -hmm. The real success of any type of therapeutic intervention is the rapport that we have with our clients. I think it's something like 80% yeah. now that we have with our clients. So I, I built a lot of rapport with them. And she, I, I also calibrate my clients physiologically. So her redness and her shallow breathing began to calm down and she began to calm down. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it was okay, you know. And she kind of relaxed yeah. and her her posture changed and all of that, you know, all of these things. And it was time to get started. And we did. And I loved her question. She said to me, um, in the podcast, you said that your business model is like 12 sessions, three months. And she said, but what if I need more? Will you, will you discharge me if I still need more? And I said, oh, no. Knowing the real answer, she won't need more. But I don't say that. Because, you know, right. I, I know that she won't. Mm -hmm. But... If people do, then of course we carry on. And then I, right. I will see them intermittently, um, like for like as you service your car, you know, you go in for a tune-up. <laughs> and I'll see them when they exactly. need it. Or I see I don't see people sometimes for a year and they might something might happen in their lives where it is a little bit overwhelming. But my job is to um, empower people to have skills that they can use for when life does throw something at them, because inevitably we have to deal with stuff. 
and I equip them so they don't rely on me and they live their life and they can um, teach their children how to do it. And I, I give them, mm -hmm. I give each client a very large dose of a prescription of self havening and lots of sessions in the, in the beginning of how to do it. Um, what, what um, affirmations to focus on based on what we did in session. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. And, uh, and now I do Skype as well. So it's limitless what we can do. It, it, it really, as I've said, I'm going to say it again, it, it, it's awesome for me to see because, you know, not being trained in that brain body connection, uh, although I've done a lot of reading on it and, uh, you know, seminars and all, but to know that there's that added yeah. piece. You know, the, what I've done in the past and uh, the bulk of my work was with addictions, uh, chemical, um, there's a lot of trauma based there. And there were a lot of times that, you know, I would try to rework a patient through some of those traumatic experiences. And I think you had success. In I was going to say that, thank you for bringing up addictions because I, I, I did. Yeah. And um I'll just interject for I work with addiction quite a bit. Uh, the, as we know, there are mm -hmm. all kinds of addiction, shopping, sex, gambling, yeah. substance. Uh, my take on it, and I, you may or may not agree, um, the beauty of this is we haven't spoken to each other beforehand, so it's all new, is <laughs> exactly. addiction is numbing suffering. That's how I see it. I, do, I don't see it as somebody who's mm -hmm. broken or diseased. That's, this is, again, one woman's opinion. It doesn't right. represent the Havening right. organization. It, it's my personal experience. However, what Havening techniques have allowed me to do is find the suffering very quickly and go mm -hmm. straight to the core. It's almost laser focused on that. And I have worked with quite a few um, addicts, and that's what I do. I, you know, and, and inevitably, there is, there's usually, as you know, um, adverse childhood experiences, ACE. Uh, so there's been a lot of humiliation and rejection and bullying and maybe sexual and emotional abuse. And of course they drink, or of course they shop too much. I, I'm not condoning it, but it is right. a coping strategy. So I, mm -hmm. I used to spend a lot of time, you know, looking at the addiction, changing the coping strategies, changing the the landscape of their life with them obviously but i i i just always hit a wall there was only so far i could go and this it's not a hundred percent um nothing is that i've seen in my life mm -mm. um but it, it just gives me that extra added value of getting to mm -hmm. the core of the issue that is buried in the amygdala that will relieve the suffering reduce remove the suffering so they can then let go of whatever it is that is the addiction. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch as they go through. Right. Yeah. And, and that, is, that is true. You know, when you can really identify what that trauma is and help them work through that trauma, in most cases, the addiction is no longer present the, because the need has been Absolutely. taken away, you know, and, um, and, and the other thing that I'm, I'm really fascinated with this is that whole, you know, self-soothe, you know, that you can teach them how to do that so that when they're, you know, out wherever they may be, some stress, some anxiety pops up, do that self-soothing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, from what I, I saw in, in you demonstrating, that wouldn't be an embarrassing yeah, thing to do. Not at all. Wherever well, you are. You just reminded me of something else. Have you noticed, I'm sure we all watching this have known somebody, when they're upset, they do this, they tend to put their, they put yeah. their, okay, and then you might see people that are really, you know, way into some sort of mental health issue where they might be sitting there rocking and hugging themselves, okay, and the third one is people wring their hands, so what this has told us is that, as we know, the body is always looking to heal. So it's going to the right places, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily doing the right things. And thank you for mentioning that because I can give you some quick takeaways right now. You know, if you're, I have a client that gets very stressed in a car. So every time he gets to a red light, he doesn't care what people think. He, he does shoulder to elbow havening because I'm calm, I'm calm, I'm calm. We live in LA, so the traffic here is quite bad. And he's, 
<laughs> after the last <laughs> back in calm LA exactly, traffic. <laughs> exactly. So he's in a much better state. Now, this might not be something you want to do in public. Okay. I, I get that. However, you right. could always go to a restroom and go into a cubicle and do some uh, face havening. It doesn't have to be. You could do some of this as well. However, you could just sit in an airport, if you like, and just do some hand havening. I mean, does this look, it doesn't really look weird or you, I'm holding my hands up for the sake of the screen, but you could have your hands in your lap and just be doing some hand havening and internally going, mm -hmm. I'm calm. I am safe. Wh whatever the resource that you need at that moment, that's what you bring up, you know, and you do the hate with it. Right. And what I love about it is you are then, you've got another tool in your tool belt. You are then equipped with something mm -hmm. that it's not just, oh, I'm going to spin out of control and I'm going to have a panic attack and help, help, help. It's, and I have this, right. I, I call it SBS. It's a great little takeaway tip. Stop, breathe, solve. Now you can use solve or smile. Because as we know, when you smile and, and um, breathe at the same time, fear cannot live in that environment. So it looks something like this. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're overwhelmed, just stop. Whether it's standing stop or sitting stop, you take three really deep diaphragmatic breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you let it out, let out a sigh of relief and release. Okay. And, and then um, yep. you, I, I liken it to a snow globe. A snow globe, if you shake up the snow globe, it's like what I call a brain blizzard. And you've got all of this snow going on. So, of course, you can't think straight. If you sit the snow globe down, the snow goes to the bottom. And then you can pick up the one piece of snow that you want to focus on, right? Not 25,000 that are going on in your mind. So, mm -hmm. you stop. You breathe. Because we now know that, or we have known, that three deep diaphragmatic breaths reset you, refocus you. And it just kind of, mm -hmm. it, it oxygenates the brain, which is what the brain needs. And then you look at it through different eyes. You literally look at the situation through different eyes. And then I add the havening piece, okay? So you can stop, mm -hmm. you can do the breathing whilst you're havening. And if you just want to do the hand havening on your lap, sitting at an airport or train station or waiting to go to an interview, whatever the situation is, and then you solve or you smile and you just smile. And again, it changes the neurochemistry of the brain. And mm -hmm. as many times as you do that and interfere with the bad pattern that is going on, the terrible hamster wheel, it begins to change. And you fall off that hamster right. wheel, and then you get to choose the new hamster wheel that you want to go on that has sparkly lights and great music or whatever you want on it. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It really is about taking control of what our brain thinks about and thinking on purpose, just really thinking on purpose for the benefit of ourselves. Right. It, it's a, it's a great add on piece because a lot of what you're saying, especially uh, uh, what you were just saying, these are tips I've been giving clients for ages. You know, the, these <laughs> are a lot of things I'll write about and do it, it's, but you've added that, touch you've added that we're combining now the body to the brain it's not just an intellectual pursuit any, any longer and it's hardwired at birth we love that touch uh, my son when i think back on it he used to like like write me reading a story or he was watching television he said stroke my arm mommy stroke my arm and i did and i thought why is this you know how come this is so soothing for mm -hmm. him because at the time i i had no idea he's 29 yet now so that was a little while ago but yeah, it's something that we, we can take with us. And like, as I said about the micro preemies, they have proved to us, uh, without realizing right. it, they've proved that these are the self-soothing mm -hmm. things that we can do. And I, I love to empower my clients. I don't want my clients to hang around for years, personally. I want them to go off and live their lives um, and have really good yep. result. And I now teach parents how to do it for children. I'm on Jio, which is the, the Deepak Chopra channel. I have 35 very short videos. If anybody wants to come along and have a look at them, I unpack Havening and I demonstrate all of these things. And if they sign up to my website, little plug here for myself, sorry. Um, all the Please W's, do. change your mind for good. All words, no numbers, change your mind for good. If you sign up to the box that pops up, you get an immediate, I think it's a 12 minute one-to-one -one Havening session with me. 
or you have to just find a quiet room, um, turn everything off except the uh, laptop or the computer and just follow my lead. And I promise you, you will feel a lot better than when you started. And I teach you how to do that and then you take that away. I, I just a little um, something I want that is very important to mention. If there are really big, deep traumatic issues, it is always best to work with a havening practitioner. Um, so some of these things I would not, certainly would not deal with on my own. But some of the smaller things, let's say somebody cuts you up in traffic and you come home feeling really overwhelmed by it and you know that you've got to right. deal with your family for the rest of the evening. Just take a little break, sit down, do some havening. I am calm. Mm -hmm. I am calm. I am centered. <laughs> I am that, that must happen often in the car. <laughs> exactly. Car is um, bittersweet. Um, um, necessary evils is what <laughs> I call them. So, yeah, yes. it, it, they're, they're many interventions and they are... Just beautiful little ways that we can change our neurochemistry, and it doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could—I know our time is running out, and I could say so much more. So I do hope some of your listeners do follow me. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I do, as you know, I do Takeaway Tip Tuesday. So today I put a little havening video up. Yep. Because thank you for following me. And uh, yeah, there's—I'm mm -hmm. doing my best to give all as much information about it for free as I possibly can, because this is really good for people. It really does work. And we all need it. No, it's a time right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way too much. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that really is, I mean, from my point of view as a counselor, that this is something to look more into uh, because of those connections, you know, so that we don't get stuck. Um, and you know what? We're training now. Our, what, sorry to interrupt you, but our training is... Uh, Doing oh, psychotherapists, okay. psychologists, um, EMDR people, are all kinds of uh, LMFTs, because what what we see it as isn't, or what and they what they see it as is an adjunct to their existing mm -hmm. methodologies. I I exactly. I don't again one woman's opinion. I wouldn't really do it as a standalone, but as an add on, as a bolt on to what you already do. It just as you beautifully illustrated earlier, it gives you that missing piece of. I know there's something there and I have, I don't have that thing to do to get there. And this, is that right. thing, not meaning to be irreverent because I love it. I'm evangelical about it, as you can tell, but it is just that mm -hmm. missing piece of the puzzle. And it, you're, you're practice source when you, when you have this piece, because you don't have to then, mm -hmm. you know, recommend them out to somebody else that does have, you know, right. knowledge in that area, in that particular area. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. it, it's it's wonderful to give you know that deeper sense of healing um that that's what's fascinating you know because it's easy it's deeper it's getting right to and the you don't source, have to say the pain very you know, long. 60 and, and, seconds not much at all <laughs> exactly you know and and, and I'm, I'm so fascinated with, with that you know working with the hands because if you were to do, like, say, in the airport, I wouldn't look, uh, give a second look to somebody doing that. That's not bizarre at all. Um, but yet you're soothing, you're healing, you're, you know, taking care of yourself. All those things that are so important yeah. uh, to, to finding peace. And you're doing it without anybody really knowing you're doing it. Yeah, and again, you've reminded me of something I'm fairly evangelical about is looking after ourselves. And I, I work with a lot of clients and I say, where are you on your list? And they say, my list, I'm not even on my list. And I believe people, I believe yeah. we need to be number one on our list. And so I know that that makes some people uncomfortable because they start, the word selfish sort of floats up to the top. However, the word right. selfish, the actual definition is to look after oneself, which isn't a bad thing, but I know that's uncomfortable. So I see it as self-nurturing. And uh, speaking of airplanes and airports, uh, when you get on an airplane and it says in the unlikely event that the cabin pressure drops and you're with a young child or an older incapacitated person, who puts the mask on first, you know? And we forget that. We forget that if we don't breathe first, yep. we can't help anybody else. What you don't, you can't give what you don't have. You just can't. If the bank account is empty, it's empty, yep. right? And right now we really exactly. need to look into ourselves Inwardly, not in a selfish way, but in a how can I become the better version of myself? How can I heal? How can I stay well? And I'm a big, 
big supporter of meditation and um, I have a client right now that is doing some experimentation with havening and meditation and the results are amazing. Mm. So he havens mm. pre-meditation and gets releases the delta wave state, gets in the delta wave state and does it throughout right. his meditation. And he said, I sometimes am just vibrating. Mm. You know, my body is just vibrating. It, it, yeah. it can't go wrong. You know, it's, it can only be for the good because they're two wonderful states exactly. to be in. And, uh, it just really heightens the the result of your meditation. So I do I do think our heads are being turned in a really good way. We're all becoming mindfulness now is a big buzzword. Uh, neuroplasticity is a word now, and um, we're paying more attention to taking responsibility for our own outcome and our own level of stress and anxiety. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about helping people manage their stress and anxiety, relieve their stress and anxiety so that they can be free, you know, freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. That's that's my mission as well. And this is another tool uh, to be used to help people yeah. to get there. And and I, I think it's awesome. Um, I'm glad that, you know, I found it through you and, and that we can have this time to talk. Um, because it, it really is, you know, at least to me and hopefully to other people, uh, you know, listening and watching and, uh, you know, that there is a, a fascinating and easy way to very deeply uh, find that peace and uh, you know, make the connections that we need to make and break those connections that, uh, you know, really need to be yeah. broken. And I've worked so. with some of the deepest traumatic events, just so your, your listeners know. I mean, my first client had three major traumatic events. And I even said to myself, can I do this? You know, and um, now the testimony on my website, she volunteered. She was having nosebleeds, blackouts, vomiting. Noise. I mean, I won't go into all of it. And now she's a, a working actress again. And um, nice. her business is flying. She, she does. She's also an illustrator and does children's books and things. So, you know, this stuff does work. It, it can deal with some of the difficult mm -hmm. traumas that are out there. Yeah. And um, as I said uh, before, anything is possible. You know, not not everything has a hundred percent guarantee behind it, and and this doesn't have a hundred percent guarantee behind it either. However, it's pretty high, and you'll always mm. feel better after. Uh, I had a client yesterday, and she couldn't think. She said, I think we're pretty much done. I can't think of anything else, really. And then she started talking about the present political situation, which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be political anyway, but she was really struggling with it. So we did some havening around that, and she started giggling after. She said, okay, I'm good. I'm good to go. Now, I, I, I now have a very different perspective on what I personally right. can control. Because you know, Chris, it's, it's what, what can we control in this world? We can control. Right. Exactly. We have to start with ourselves. What you look at yourself, you look at your environment, mm -hmm. and say, right, what I can't control the weather, I can't control who's president, I can't control this, no. but I can control my inner state, my inner peace. Exactly. And yeah. I believe we're on the same page the, with that the, belief. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, most definitely on the same page with that. There, there is no. I have been preaching the have for ages, and. Uh, Definitely in today's climate, um, you know, we really need to focus that way. And, and that whole self-care, uh, you know, if if we focused on the self-care, reminded ourselves that, you know, to, to deal with what is in our control, um, I, I think maybe things might settle down a little they bit. They will. In, I have faith. Climate and, and maybe we can handle things differently. Well, you are <laughs> helping today. By at least introducing, I'm sure more, many more than one or two. Um, but but I'll, I'll just be very conservative at the moment. Even if one or two people find out about this, we have, we have mm -hmm. both made a difference to their lives. Okay, and that's yep. why I one totally person agree. at a time. And, and then they they like it. And my business has pretty much blown up recently, and it's all word of mouth. It really is word of mouth. Yeah. And, and, and that's how it works, yeah, that's, you know, and to me, I've always believed in, in the domino effect. You know, you, you help one person and you have no idea their range of who you've helped because of that one yeah. person, you know, and, and where that goes. And so, um, and, and it definitely, Sorry, if people can afford mouth. a session, they can, they can look at my videos and they can get all the free tips and all the free mm -hmm. Methods, yeah. um, as I said, if it's something really, really deep and traumatic, you might not want to. Well, you 
you can carry on doing it, but it might not give you the ultimate desired outcome that you want. Right. But it'll certainly help, and it's all all good. You mm -hmm. know, all little by little, we can help ourselves. And then each other. I've got mothers doing it with children. I put a little video up last week on Instagram mm -hmm. for havening your child instead of giving them a timeout, giving them a havening timeout. And I had a mother today say, right. thank you so much. I did it with my two-year-old. And he just like calmed down immediately. And I said, thank you for the feedback. Excellent. When he's old enough to really, you know, latch on to this concept, teach him how to do it for himself. So if you've got um, mm -hmm. uh, performance anxiety children have, uh, exam anxiety, all these things, they can prepare themselves. They can get themselves in the Delta Wave state exactly. in the classroom, sitting at their desk. They can stop, put the pen down or whatever, and just do some, and I'm sure they won't mind mm -hmm. that if they know and understand the benefit no. of it. So I, I like, I, what I love about this, it's very generous. We, we give a lot of stuff away because it's, yeah. it's, it's all about we all have to people. live, but but my, my real ultimate goal is that people are well and healthy and that we all are more harmonious and we have more peace and less divisiveness. And I know Havening can help that. So if you want it for free, you know it's out there. We have lots of videos and things that can help you. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, and, and I, I'm on the same page with you there. More unity, less divisiveness, and find some inner peace. Um, can you, uh, again, just give the, your website so that people can find those videos and your um, I have a Facebook page. Um, there are two Michelle Paradises, but and they're both me. However, the one in the red blouse is uh, my business Facebook page. So you can really interact with me. And my name is spelled differently than most Michelle. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E, -E, just one L. And my last name is Paradise, mm -hmm. just the way it sounds. P-A-R-A-D-I-S-E. It's not made up. It's my, actually my my birth name. So there you go. I got lucky. My um, Instagram, which I'm loving at the moment, is Mish Para, two halves of my name, or Michelle Paradise, you'll find me. My website is all the W's, and it's change your mind for good, all words, letters.com. I'm on jio.com, J-I-Y-O, and my my channel with Deepak Chopra is called The Healing Haven. Um, so that's where my videos are. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think I've forgotten anything. And of course, I'm going to be on this podcast now for eternity, so you can always listen to it. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think I think that covers most things. I'm very awesome. um, uh, interactive with my followers. You know, I'm not remote, and uh, mm -hmm. I will. If you have a question, reach out to me, email me, text me. Yep. My phone numbers are out there. Um, I'm in LA, but um, I won't answer you in the middle of my night. But I will answer you. As I can and I see private clients in the Beverly Hills area of Los Angeles however if you aren't if that's not possible I'm on Skype and my Skype name is Paramish which is two halves of my name in reverse so that's P-A-R-A-M-I-C-H awesome well, I really appreciate I really appreciate it yeah, as do I. It's definitely been enlightening to me. I know it's been enlightening to others. And, uh, you know, we'll just continue to get the word out about, you know, how we can find peace by using the havening. And uh, I really appreciate your time. That This great. has been awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Well, have, <laughs> have a great rest of the you day. You have a very peaceful day as well. Okay. All the best. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>